Dartech Engineering is an engineering consultancy office based in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and specialized in reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is the process of digitizing mechanical objects into digital files using 3D laser scanners. The process of reverse engineering is fairly simple. One takes a mechanical object that is interested in that does not have easy geometry and laser scan that part, converts it into point cloud, then into nums, and then to surfaces, and then into a CAD model, computer-aided design file. Once the computer-aided design file is ready, then we can reproduce it using multiple manufacturing processes. Some of those include obsolete part replacement, high value part replacement, and rapid prototyping. There are instances when reverse engineering is a good solution to your needs. Some of those criteria include when the parts are difficult to manufacture by having freeform surfaces, if the value of the part are too expensive, or if the parts are obsolete or discontinued. Dartec uses a certain process by which it conducts reverse engineering with its clients. First step is to meet with the client and assess the part for reverse engineering. Second is physically inspect the part and make sure that it's viable to conduct using reverse engineering processes. Then a metallurgy inspection is conducted to make sure that the combination of material and grade of material is determined in any post-manufacturing processes. Then the part is scanned using the appropriate 3D laser scanner Parts are then processed into computer-aided design files or CAD files. Parts are then manufactured before being inspected and finally delivered to the client as a finished final mechanical object. Some examples of reverse engineering parts that we could offer to our clients include bearings, pumps, valves, impellers, gaskets, bushings, and spur gears. How do you fabricate mechanical parts without engineering drawings? Here we have a final product. This is the end cap for an aerosol bottle. We need two parts of the mold to create that final product. So there is a top part of the mold and there's there a bottom. The plastic is injected from this end and then fills in the bottom base mold. Now, as you will notice that the features of this part are not uniform and not uh, really exactly squares and rectangles. So we have a lot of freeform surfaces and a lot of details that cannot be captured easily using a standard caliper. So what we do is before we scan the part, we have to prep the part. We use a special kind of coating that mats the surface to reduce the amount of reflection and to improve the amount of accuracy that you can accomplish by laser scanning and to make sure that you have the highest accuracy digital file. As you will notice, as we are spraying the part, we are taking care of the speed and the angle of spray, just to make sure that we coat it in the same right thickness uh, required. Not too thin, not too thick, just enough to reduce the amount of reflection to the laser source. So how does reverse engineering work? So now that we've prepared the part and uh, sprayed it with a special kind of spray, now what we do is we take it and place it on the scanner after we've placed it on the scanner, we need to calibrate the equipment. The first step of calibration is to make sure that we 000 locate the, the origin on the DS series machine. As you will notice, the results of calibration are of high accuracy. That's to ensure that the part that to be scanned is of also high accuracy. Now that the machine is calibrated, now the part is ready to be scanned. The scanning process will take multiple phases to make sure that we get all parts and features to, of the part, which means that we need to place some targets on the part that are silicone based and placed temporarily on the part so when we rotate it, we can trace the, the two halves of the scan and then link them together through the common points. Now that we've prepared the part for scanning, now what we need to do is prepare and calibrate the scanner itself. So the first part is to calibrate the system. As you can see, the results of scanning and calibration are of high accuracy, which will reflect in the parts to be scanned.
as you will notice, as the scanning goes through, it takes multiple passes and, and scans the part, you will notice that the part is starting to build up on the computer, which is a, fee, a, a process called point cloud. Point cloud is the end result that comes from laser scanning a mechanical object using 3D laser scanners. As you will notice when the laser scanner is making multiple passes to the part, it's actually trying to copy the geometry of this mechanical object. And you will notice that it has multiple features, so it needs to take multiple angles of the mechanical object in order for it to digitize it. And as you will notice on the computer screen, that the end result that we will show up at this uh, stage of the process is a point cloud file. Obviously, when you scan the part, not all the features are captured because laser cannot go through holes or see dark surfaces. We need to make sure that we actually cast a specially designed silicone. This part makes sure that we get all the features that we couldn't capture using laser scanners. And this will take multiple uh, attempts to make sure that we capture all the features that are needed. Once the top parts are completed, we need to use the dowel gauges to make sure that we have the right diameters and make sure because these are standards, so whatever the scanner tells us, we need to comply with the standard, not the laser scan. And on the back part, you will notice some threads. So we use thread gauges to make sure that we capture the correct threads of the final part. As you will notice in a side-by-side -side comparison from the original file and the end result CAD file, the, the scan part is an identical replica of the original part, which could be easily manufactured using a mill or a CNC machine. Now, if we go back to the reverse engineering cycle, we'll notice that we've completed almost half of the cycle by scanning the part and then creating a CAD file. The next step would be to manufacture the part or produce it using rapid prototyping, whatever the end user needs. And then we inspect it after manufacturing to make sure that critical features are captured, are in within acceptable tolerance, and then we deliver the parts to the end user. To learn more about how reverse engineering could help you digitize any size objects, small or large, please contact us.